In my last video, I showed you how to make a handbag and you had to put the zip in in a cylinder form of fabric. Well, if many of you, um, you might not like to do that. So I'm showing you today a handy hint that is a much easier way of making the handbag. So this was the handbag that we made the other day and it was the zip was put in in a cylinder fashion. So it's all one complete piece of fabric and we put the zip in. If you look at the video, you'll see how the zip went in. But this one, I'm going to show you the easier way. We've made this one up and this will end up with a little seam in the bottom, but it's much easier to put the zip in. So here we have your fabric, your pollen, pollen, and your lining. I've got a green lining for this one. You can pick out anything. The nice thing is if you've got multicolored fabrics, you can pick any one color out. So I chose a blue for that, a green for this one. So you'll still need your zip, which is the 11 inch or 25 centimeter zip that goes along there. The first thing that's different is we're going to cut I've got them layered nicely and I have used a little bit of 505 just to it's not stuck hard but it is just holding it in place that helps with this one and I'm going to cut I've chalked some lines for the quilting which we started with before and I'm just going to cut down the center line of this making two pieces line that up So I've got two pieces. We are going to zigzag or overlock these two edges to start with. So zigzag along where you've just cut because that is going to be your center seam on the bottom. So I've just zigzagged overlocked down the side there. You can see that's the back, that's the lining. Leave those two there. The next thing is to quilt both pieces. I'm just going to do that one, that one. Might do another one there. So I'm going to quilt just using a straight stitch. You can um, stiffle quilt, free motion, you can do whatever you like, but I'm just keeping it in place so that I'll come back when I've just done that. So I've quilted down just across there and across there. When we come to put our zip in, if you remember from the last video, you need these two lines to actually meet and line up. So now the next move, leaving this separate, this uh, cut edge that you've overlocked, we're going to put the zip right side down. Now my zip is just a fraction shorter than the other one, but I'm using what I've already got. I keep telling you about this and I've got to use what we have in our cupboards and drawers. So I'm going to stitch along here with a zipper foot, I will. You can actually use an open toe foot for this first one, but you must use a zipper foot when we turn it over and put the uh, top stitching next to the teeth. So I'm going to stitch along here with a straight stitch, an eighth or quarter of an inch in, eighth of an inch I think is good along here, the first row. So I'll come back when I've done that one side and then I'll show you the next step. So pressing this, that's our first stitch line and I'm now going to bring this over. I'll just pin that, bring it up to the teeth but not over the teeth. So I'll pin that along there and that's using my zipper foot, I'll stitch all the way along there. Now, when I get to the end using my zipper foot, I do unzip my zipper a little bit so I get that nice and neat in the finished, in the top opening edge. So remember that you can always open your zip a little bit. So that's the next step. Just top stitching close to the teeth. I've top stitched the zipper close to the teeth. If you look on the back, I've actually just zigzagged along there so that when you open and close the zip when you do that it doesn't catch in any threads I don't like threads underneath zippers so I've just made sure that all those threads are nicely tied in so the next thing is of course you've got to have the other side which is this piece 
So you're going to flip that right over and do exactly the same thing, sewing your zip in on there first, turning it over and then bringing that up. Line up your uh, quilting line in the middle there, just like so, and top stitch again. The zip is in now, all done okay. That's the back which I've overlapped. So now all we've got to do is draw this up. That is going to make our seam along the bottom and that will make our cylinder as we did with the last video. Just sew that straight stitch across the bottom. The seam is done along the bottom which we saw on the other bag. It makes a cylinder again and all that left to do now is the open end of your zip. That's going to be the vertical one. And this other end is going to be the horizontal seam. So I'm going to pin this and stitch down the vertical side where the zipper is opening at the top stitch down there and I will zigzag over the edge again and then I'll do the bottom piece which is that one I'll trim that off so it's nice and even I'll stitch across there horizontally and zigzag across that and we'll be finished our bag is now finished I've done the vertical uh, seam there and the horizontal one there there's a seam in the bottom just like the blue one I showed you earlier all we need to do is zip it up. I'll lay it flat for now. Well, actually, I'll show you. So you've got your tall end for your scissors, ready for your scissors and things. As I said before, it's very handy when you've got handles on your scissors or your cutters and things, and they're a bit taller one end than the other. So that's your bag all finished. I hope that that's a much easier way for you to do it. The other thing I was just going to show you before I finish off is... When you have cut, I'll just cut um, a tiny piece free arm off here. If you use your board, now when you pull and use for lightweight wadding or pollen or something, you're left with this fuzz in the middle. I discovered this is a microfiber cloth. And if you take a piece and you circulate movement all the way down the line, it will pull all the threads out of your board and the fuzzy wuzzy bits pieces off and there you have all that fuzz that's come out from that one cut on the line work a little bit at it and you, it comes out really easily and keeps your board nice and dry but it heals up the cuts so I discovered this quite by accident so I hope that that little handy hint on top of this will help you out if you've enjoyed the video There'll be some more videos upcoming, but I hope you've enjoyed this one. Just remember to give us a thumbs up, a like and subscribe and go along to the Etsy shop for the pattern for this and for all my other patterns. Have a good browse and I'll see you again very shortly with another project.